Hi there, I'm Diane Chaplin, and this is my monthly live stream, whether you're watching this on the first Tuesday of the month or are watching it at some other point during the month. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, today's program is called La Folia. For much of my life, I have pronounced this La Folia, which you may also know it as that. If you don't know it, that's fine also. Uh, but I have been informed that the correct pronunciation is La Folia, so I'm trying to change to that. This means in Spanish and French, kind of like the crazy, crazy, craziness. Um, and in fact, the, the melody originally, actually not the melody, the bass line originated mm, late 15th century, possibly in Portugal. Uh, but at the time it was a, a series of notes, of, just a few notes that made up a bass line. And the uh, musicians of the time, just this Renaissance time, would improvise some kind of dance tune on top of this bass line. And the folks who danced the dance were said to dance in a wild frenzy, which is why it was called the crazies. And so some writers of the time talked about how nutty the, the dancing was and that there was a suggestion of voluptuousness. Uh, and also there were reports of men in dresses being carried on the shoulders of some of the dancers. So it was uh, pretty wild for those times. Um, in the 1500s, it ended up, this melody, this bass line melody, ended up in Spain, where it kind of developed. And then around 1600, Spanish musicians who were working in Italy took it over to Italy, where it really blossomed and became the La Folia that we know today. So I'm going to give you an example here of what the ancient bass line would have sounded like in its dancey version. <laughs> however long you want to have a dance. Uh, when La Folia got into Italy and the Baroque era started around the mid 1600s, this dance calmed down a lot. The Baroque era was more interested in uh, elegance than rowdiness. And so the melody slowed down, this, this bass line melody that I just played, the bass line became something like this. <laughs> hear it's the same notes, same kind of progression, but with a much more subtle and restrained character. On top of this bass line, a melody became the melody for La Folia. And then many, many composers in the Baroque era, Vivaldi, Corelli, uh, Bach, Handel, and composers from later eras as well, wrote sets of variations using this melody. So it started out as kind of improvised variations, but a lot of these composers wrote these down, uh, and there are many, many examples of this that exist today. Around 1700, a French composer named Marin Marais wrote a set of 32 variations for the viola da gamba, which was the precursor of the cello. They, they, these two instruments existed, coexisted at that time. Uh, and then in the 20th century, some other uh, cellists took the Marin Marais version and made contemporary sets of variations for cello and piano. Fast forward to the 21st century, I'm going to play today four examples of La Folia written for solo cello by cellist composers within the last 20 years. Uh, some of these are based on the Marin Marais and the Maurice Gendron, who is the 20th century cellist that made his version. Some of them are kind of loosely based on that, um, but each one of the composers has put in their own special things. And so even though they have the same melody and uh, the, the same general form, they're all really, really different. I'm going to start with a La Folia by Tanya Anisimova. She is a cellist who lives now in Virginia. She's originally from Chechnya in Russia. And when she uh, was in her 30s, she moved to the, I guess she moved to the U.S. to go to school. And then when she became a naturalized citizen in her 30s. Um, and she wrote this very much acknowledging that it's based on the Marin Marais and the more Jean Dron version. But she definitely put in her own touches. One of the things that I think you'll notice is we get a little bit of the Spanish flavor with a flamenco variation. So this is La Folia by Tanya Anisimova.
That was the La Folia by Tanya Anisimova. Next, I'm going to play a La Folia by Nikol Stahel. He is a Slovakian cellist who's primarily a Baroque cellist. So the Baroque cello is basically the same instrument. In fact, my instrument is technically a Baroque cello because it was made during the Baroque era. Um, so 300-ish years ago. But Baroque cellos are set up without steel strings, without an end pin, so you have to kind of hug it with your knees, um, with a lot of things that make it sound more mellow uh, and, and just kind of less bright and modern. And there's a different kind of a bow. Um, and so what I find really interesting about this next La Folia is that although Mikhail Stahel is a Baroque cellist pr primarily, his La Folia is more modern sounding than the one I just played, which was very Baroque for the, for the whole time. Um, and so you'll notice a few things in here. Uh, despite the fact that he uses some modern techniques, some different kinds of sounds, I think he really always continues to hold the Baroque aesthetic of this La Folia. La Folia. Um, you'll notice again, he, he invokes a little bit of Spain. I think there's a section that pretty close to the beginning, it sounds like castanets. Um, this is seven variations for cello solo, La Folia by Mikal Stahel.
is Mikael Stahel's version of La Folie. Next, this is the third out of four. Uh, next is variations by, I am not sure if he pronounces his name George Mertens or Georg Mertens. He was born in Germany and in his 30s he emigrated to Australia, where my guess is his name is possibly George now. Um, I spelled his name wrong on my publicity. It doesn't have an E on the end of it because I thought his name was George. I, I own this. <laughs> I did not spell his name correctly. Um, he, this is the, this La Folia is the most closely related to the very first one I played, the Tanya Anisimova, because both of them really base their sets of variations on the two French guys, Marin Marais from 300 years ago and then Maurice Chandron from last century. Um, and yet, they're very, very different. You may hear some variations that, same, that sound almost identical. None of them are exactly identical, but you can hear, I think, the ones where, that, that they really took from the original Marin Marais French version. So this is Variations on La Folie by Georg George Mertens. I'm going to tune, hold on.
That was George Merten's version of La Folia. And now things change. Now things get different because this is the La Folia by Gio Giovanni Solima. So the first thing I do is I untune my cello. So Giovanni Solima is an Italian cellist and composer also. And I think it's fair to say that he brings the crazy to La Folia. He totally embodies that idea. And in fact, he does not base his version of La Folia on that elegant Baroque melody that you've now heard for quite a while. <laughs> but rather, he bases his version, it, not really on the original bass line, I, I, although I think that the rowdy character is there, but he bases it sort of on the, the slower Baroque version of the bass line. So my, my low string, which is usually a C, for those, those of you cellists who are paying attention here, I'm a double bass. It's now tuned down to a low G. Which gives me the ability to play octaves by playing a fifth on the instrument. hear that technique used a bunch. Turns out when you tune one string, all the other strings go out of tune. So what Solima does, the way he constructs this is rather than making florid variations on the melody, he varies the bass line. So you're going to hear the bass line. You'll hear the first thing you'll hear right at the beginning is the bass line, as opposed to all the other three where you heard the melody going on. Um, you'll hear the bass line, which is virtually the same as I played at the beginning. And then you'll hear variations on the bass line. In between the variants of the bass line, they're very subtle variations, but they're all a little different, is a sort of fantasy variation that is not necessarily based on anything recognizable from the piece. And this is, I think, where the crazy comes in. There's a little bit of Baroque sounding stuff in the bro the bass line, mostly sounds Baroque, uh, but Solima definitely goes off onto his own, own wild fantasies and brings the crazy to La Folia. La Folia. So this is La Folia by Giovanni Solima. <laughs> Thank you. 
that was Giovanni Solima's version, excuse me, Giovanni Solima's version of La Folia. And thus brings the, the program to a crazy end. I will retune my cello and return to normal life. Uh, I hope to see you next month, which is January, if you can believe it, 2023. I'm going to serenade you with a sweet new year, a program of sweets, uh, including the third suite by Benjamin Britten. I might just check in and say hi to some folks who are here. So many interesting names that people that I know, people that I don't know. Thank you so much, all you people that I don't know. Gloria, Lisa, hi, Paul, my cousin is watching. Lots of other people that I know as well. Thank you guys so much for checking in and I'll see you next month. Bye.